Hey guys, it feels really good to be back. Welcome to the Fair Game Podcast featuring champion golfer Adam Scott, where we talk about all things golf. I'm Andrew Haynes, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Mayville. What's up, Eric? Hey, how's it going? Good to see you again. You too, man. And the one and only, Adam Scott. Hey, Adam. G'day, guys. How are you? Great. Fantastic. Excited for today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got a good one today. Tell us a little about uh, who we have here today, Adam. Well, we're lucky enough to have a recent gold medalist and number one player in the world, Nelly Quarter, joining us today. And uh, I think she makes a, a perfect case for being on our Change Makers segment here because it's been a long time since I've kind of seen this much expectation instantly dumped on one player to carry uh, the game of golf forward. And uh, I say that with only encouragement, but it's something I'd definitely like to touch on uh, with Nelly today and see how she's handling that, but also hear how she's feeling coming off winning Olympic gold and a major this year, which is really huge. That's a very, very busy year. It's been, uh, it's been crazy to watch. She seems so, so consistent after uh, the U.S. Open. So can't wait to hear how she manages that. It's going to be great. And uh, as always, we'll be uh, kind of listening in for any tips we can get on our own game, right? <laughs> That's absolutely right. As always. <laughs> More swing thoughts for me. More swing thoughts for me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Let's get right to it with Nelly then, shall we? Let's hit it. Today, we're going to be chatting with a really awesome guest. Um, a couple notable things that you guys might know. World number one, which is amazing. Um, and also recently won some really awesome gold hardware. Um, in Tokyo. Um, Nelly Korda, thanks for uh, being with us today. Thank you for having me. It's been a crazy uh, a year. I'd love to start with just, you know, talking a little bit about the Olympics. I know it happened a little while ago, but, you know, that's a wild experience. Um, you know, how, how was that? What did that experience mean to you? Yeah, it's honestly been a surreal year. I didn't think, you know, going into this year, you know, this would happen. So if someone told me at the beginning of the year that I would have been a major champion and a gold medalist I'd be like please like you're joking <laughs> <laughs> so it's been really fun um the Olympics you know I didn't really know what what to expect in a sense because golf is so new to the Olympics and I wasn't even on tour when Rio um was played so I didn't really get to know much about it from the girls on tour but you know um especially with the restrictions and everything um I just didn't know, but it was amazing. We had so many volunteers that I actually felt like we had a crowd. So that was really cool, especially on 18 on the final day. And um, standing on that podium after, yeah. my gosh, like I, I actually had tears in my eyes because I there was like a flood of emotions going through me. For sure. Yeah. I mean, just being able to represent your country, that's got to be like a really big a big thing, especially as a golfer, which is, which is pretty cool. And then in terms of just, you know, obviously not having to have fans at events that's, you know, that's been changing recently, hopefully more for the better as we move forward. Um, you know, you mentioned that, you know, having those volunteers made it feel like an event. Um, you know, are you looking forward to seeing more and more fans in the future as, as golf continues on? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was kind of already getting used to seeing fans out. Um, we had fans out at the KPMG and we had a couple of events out, or a couple of fans out at other events as well. So I was already starting to get used to kind of like the pressure of having fans because it's so different. Um, so it was honestly really nice and it's weird, you know, winning an event and um, not having anyone there, you not even your family. So it was really nice as well to have my sister there and, Obviously, the girl representing USA um, was really cool. Do the fans help, like, your play for both of you? I mean, like, you both went through it. Like, what's it like when there's no fans versus the actually having the fans? Like, does it give you the adrenaline, like, push? Like, what's it? What's the difference? For sure. I go a lot off of adrenaline. Like, I may not show it, but my heart is pumping, like, Unfortunately, I had that whoop on me and I had <laughs> KPMG and I was like, dang it, everyone saw it. Like my, my heart rate definitely jumps a good bit because I don't know, I, I've always had a hard time controlling it. It's something I'm still working on, but, um, yeah, I, um, I start hitting it so much 
further too. It's crazy. My caddy always looks at me and he's like, really? I'm like, I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, when it comes to fans, like I would say for sure throughout all the COVID restrictions last year, it was, I guess it was easier. I, I personally think easier for the newbies on tour because it is very different being in a final group with a bunch Mm -hmm. of fans looking at you and kind of in a sense, judging every shot Um, and just getting used to everyone, you being the center of focus. So I would say that, you know, I like it. I love having fans out. I love the energy, Um, but it was definitely some adjusting because you got used to not having anyone there. And, you know, if you hit a bad shot, you're like, Oh, well, no one saw that. We're good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's a, it, it's a big, it's a big difference having the fans back out there. It was it was it was a novelty for a couple of weeks, I think, during the COVID uh, the high of it when we had no fans. But it, it got a little boring, I must say. We were lucky to be playing, but it, it's just not the same. And uh, even though Nelly's heart's racing, she's doing a pretty good job managing it uh, so far. Right. I think so. I I hope the fans stay out there. Um, it's really great to have you on, Nelly. Congratulations from me on on everything this summer. It's been a hell of a summer for you. And um, there's guys. I think there's so many places we want to things we want to touch on with Nelly. Having a number one player in the world on on the pod is really cool. But uh, I just want to quickly jump back and and get in your brain a little bit because you won early in the season, and then uh, there was a miscut at the U.S. Open, and that was followed up by a couple of wins, including a major. Was that like a major point for you looking back on it, or was it just like ah, it happens, and we and you moved on? You knew you were playing well. How did how did you kind of deal with that going into the summer? Um, yeah, so I went early on in the season. I started off really strong. Um, and then after our LA event, I came home and I played a couple of events and I just wasn't hitting it well. And just something like it wasn't clicking as it was before. And I felt something was off, but I couldn't pinpoint it exactly. And then I went to the US Open, obviously very hard golf course. You have to hit it really well, very narrow off the tee. And even if you do hit it well, you can get an awful bounce and it's in really thick rough. So you had to play consistent. And I played so bad. Like my, <laughs> my caddy and I looked at, because I'm, a, I would say I'm a pretty consistent ball striker with my irons. And I was hitting these shots and I was like, what the heck is what that? <laughs> like, I would honestly, like it would go 15 yards, right. And they would hit a tree. That's not even in play with like a seven iron. And I was like, Oh my God. And like, after that first day, I think I almost shot like 80 the first round at us open. I was just like, so like upset, depressed because I want, you really want to, you know, coming into the U S open, I was obviously more expectations. I was a number one American, you know, there's so much that goes into it. And the U S open field means so much to me because, you know, it was my first event ever. I qualified at a really young age and it's just holds a really special meaning to me. So like, I always want to play well. I want to contend because we play always on the hardest golf courses. And I was just really, I was really distraught after that week. I kind of just kind of had to get my mind back into it. You know, golf was affecting me even off the golf course after that. And I was just like, okay, like, I can't have this happen. Like, this is not how it needs to go because you're going to play really bad golf some days and you're going to play really great golf for a stretch. And I cannot have it affect me this much. So, came home. I had a boot camp with my dad, <laughs> which was really great. He was at every part of my practice controlling everything, which was really nice because kind of took the pressure off of me of like, okay, I need a do this. I need to do that. Like thinking of everything myself. So he just told me what to do, how much time I needed to spend here and there. And it just, I just got some type of just ease after that. And I wasn't expecting, like I was, even my caddy drove over for that, um, boot camp. He spent a day with me. And honestly, I told him, I was like, I really don't 
want to expect anything into these next couple of events. I want to take it a step at a time. And then I ended up winning the next week in Michigan. And he was like, yeah, step at a time. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> the first step, the very right. first step is the like, right. big yeah. step. You just took. Yeah. And then, and then well, that's pretty cool. Up and I went to Atlanta, which was a KPMG. And I was like, I said it in after my first win or after every win, I've never played well after a win. And because I mentally drain myself so much just because of my heart rate and like the stress I put myself through just contending and winning. I don't know why <laughs> I'm still working on it. And I was, I just, I didn't even play on Monday um, of the major. I just went and played nine and uh, a pro-am on, eight, uh, on Wednesday. And I, again, and my expectations were pretty low because I was like, I never play well after a win, you know? And I ended up winning that too. So I don't know, like, I just, I guess I just had more fun those two weeks. It's just so good to hear as an, a super amateur golfer that, you know, like when you had fun, you played well and, you know, you, you, you took what you learned and from, from the bad round. Like if, I, if we could just do that, Andrew, then we, <laughs> we might be able to shoot well. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Just the power of what happens between your ears, you know, as a golfer for at any level is, is amazing. So just, you know, I'm sure for you guys, you know, the, the pros in the room, just being able to only just not only manage your game one, just from a performance perspective, but just like, you know, the mental side is probably just as important. Would you say? Yeah, for sure. I would say it's pretty, I think it's the most important. That's what makes, I think that's the difference. I'm I'm thinking of uh, I'm thinking of booking him for a couple of weeks boot camp with uh, Nelly's dad actually after this. I know. <laughs> I want to know I more about that boot camp. <laughs> you you mentioned expectation a little bit there, Nelly, and you know, following all parts of the game like I do because I just love golf. It's not often that I take notice of like how much expectation gets lumped on one person. And since this summer, I feel like the weight of women's professional golf has been put on your shoulders. Have you felt that at all? And uh, not to put any more pressure on you, I just encourage you to keep doing good. But uh, how are you handling some of that? Um, honestly, there's times where yes, and then there's times where I feel like I'm just a normal, like it's weird to say, but I'm just... A normal person I try we honestly we just try to keep it really easy going in my family like I try not to think about it too much I still don't like in a sense like yes I've achieved so much and I have that ranking but I still think there's girls that you know that are better than me and that I have so much to improve so I don't feel like I have that number one ranking because I'm always I feel like I'm still trying to chase what I've set my mind to in a sense I don't know if that makes like a lot of sense it's just the way I've grown up and obviously you know there's a lot of pressure um I felt it at some points for sure but I just try to keep it so easy like I not I don't talk about it I don't even like think about it too much you know people get so sucked into i think the fame sometimes and Mm -hmm. that they lose their themselves and i think a good thing you know you never know what's going to happen like i'm still 23 that's still pretty young for the tour and i just try to enjoy every single moment of this ranking and this experience because you know it can be taken away so fast too and then there's girls that the competition on any tour it's just getting so good um between everyone i mean it's it's honestly crazy but um i think having a good team around you to kind of bring you back to earth what my parents always say <laughs> um is very important as well and um we've always been as a family we've always been taught to be very humble yeah well it's certainly from the outside looking in at looks like you've got a great team and obviously a lot of experience in the family dealing with professional sport. Yeah. I mean, you also learn from like other people. I mean, like Naomi Osaka, or you don't even know what um, is going to happen with the girl that just won the U S open too. You know, and she has 
all this fame and you don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, prime example is Osaka. Is she just shot up into stardom and it's super hard for her. So it's, it's tough. It's honestly, it has its pros and cons. Everything does in life. I mean, I enjoy it. I love it. I love in, inspiring the next generation. I love being out there. I, you know, that's what I work for, but you know, it's hard to. For sure. Yeah. I love to circle back and talk a little bit more about your family because, you know, there's, there's so much sport there, obviously with your dad, your brother at Wimbledon, your sister plays, um, Tell us a little bit about, you know, just growing up, like I'm sure there were tennis rackets and golf clubs. I think I read somewhere you played a little bit of hockey too. You know, how was growing up with all those sports? Like, you know, did you play a little bit of everything? Uh, when did you decide to, to you know, 100% pursue golf? would love to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, my sister's obviously five years older. So she, the, she was on tour, her rookie year was in 2011. So I didn't really get to see her much growing up. My brother and I are two years apart. So we spent a lot of time together. Um, yes, I did. We did play. I, I did like gymnastics. I ice skate. I figure skated a little, but I started playing when I was two, when I started walking, just because I think it was something like our entire family could do tennis. It was like mainly one-on-one -on -one and my parents didn't want us to play tennis like at all. We would never go to tennis. Like my, my dad fell in love with golf. It was something we could all do. We could all be at the driving range together. Uh, my brother found it very boring. <laughs> <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't sit still during golf. So he actually played hockey and he was, he was pretty good. He was like on the best team for his age group in the U S. Um, and then he, my dad actually coached a professional tennis player named Radek Stepanek. And he went to a night match at the U S open versus Djokovic. So he was on Arthur Ashe. And apparently that's like when Seb was just hooked. He was like, I just want wow. to play tennis. So he quit hockey, just started playing tennis. And there was a lot of tennis rackets, a lot of talk about sports at the dinner table for sure. But it was pretty normal. Honestly, we went to school. Um, you know, it was just my brother, my sister was gone. My dad was gone a lot too, because he, uh, my sister's rookie year, he's, he was the daddy caddy. <laughs> so my mom was just flying from sport to sport. So <laughs> poor mom, <laughs> she's like the superhero of the family. Yeah. Shout out to mom and dad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Shout out to mom. But, um, yeah, it was, um, it was very sport oriented looking back. Like there was honestly golf clothes and tennis rackets everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dream to be the daddy caddy, by the way, for my daughter. That would be, I'd be so happy. <laughs> I can't do it. I, you can't have it, no? No, as much as I love my dad, like he has way too much. <laughs> uh, all right, maybe I'll just be the, uh, the onlooker outside the ropes. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One more question for that, and then we can just bounce around. Um, so between all those sports that you played um, and just with golf, do you find any similarities? Because obviously, you know, when you think of tennis and obviously you're hitting a ball and that ball's moving, golf, the ball is stationary. Like just are there similarities um, between all of those sports that you've played, things that you find in common? Like do you see them as completely different? Because, um, you know, it takes a, a pretty good amount of skill to play all of those games. Um, yeah. What's, what's your take on that? My tennis game is not very good. <laughs> Actually, growing up, my dad didn't let us play uh, tennis because it messed up our golf swing. We started being really flat and we started like going around. <laughs> so tennis was not really allowed <laughs> too much. But um, there's a lot of similarities in tennis and ping pong. I beat my dad in ping pong. Nice. <laughs> so I don't. Like my brother and my dad have really nice swings for never playing. They have amazing swings, but um, I wasn't allowed to play much of tennis because it made my swing really bad. Uh, speaking, speaking of amazing swings, I would say that the two other folks on this, both you and Adam have hands down the best swings. That Literally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say Andrew there for a second. Uh, Andrew does have a killer <laughs> swing. Yeah. Picture perfect, honestly. 
I have watched many an Adam Scott Nelly Corda swing. I'm like, what is that? De- what do they do when that first move down? We've all watched it. We've all been up just watching that swing. Just you know what they don't there. think about that first move down, probably. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> uh, Adam swing is drool worthy. <laughs> like, like legit. That, because my dad always, my dad's all about tempo. So I watched your swing a lot growing up. Your dad's pretty smart. He's getting a lot of points in my book today because that's the main thing I work on, tempo, just for everyone out there. That's my tip for Andrew today. So he was kind of fishing for a tip from Nelly, I think, when he was getting into the downswing move. But are you, uh, you've worked, so you worked a bit on tempo, but are you much more technical than that with the golf swing? Because you do have a beautiful swing and it's obviously very effective. You're long off the tee, you hit a lot of greens. I can't believe that you're calling my swing beautiful. Like, honestly, <laughs> right now, I'm, bit, like, wow. <laughs> I'm Just, starstruck right now. <laughs> it's a powerful swing and it's, uh, and it looks really good. So what, are you a little bit technical with it or are you, uh, are you just letting it go? Um, I don't try to be technical at all. Like I hate spending time on the range. Like I hate it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Can't stand it. Like I can spend maybe 45 to an hour, but recently in the past, like year and a half, I've definitely been spending more time on my swing, especially recently. Um, my main thought in my swing, because it gets really long is shoulder to chin. And once my, Mm -hmm. once my shoulder hits my chin, then I start my downswing. So that's my main and tempo. My dad, you know, obviously he's from Czech. So he would always say Coca Cola. So that was like my Coca Cola. (laughs) That's that's fantastic. (laughs) I've been telling Eric, it's as simple as like one swing thought. He needs to narrow down his 17 to like one or two, just like that. If I can get to if I get to single digits, I'll be extremely happy on those swing thoughts. <laughs> I'm going to try the Coca Cola and the shoulder thing tomorrow. So don't. <laughs> right. Honestly, going back to like the technical side of it, I just got a TrackMan right before my um, my event in Michigan. So a couple months back, that was I was like so against it. I was like, no way. I do not want a TrackMan. Like I do not want to look at numbers. I want to feel everything. Like I do not want it. And I finally caved. <laughs> it's been good for like a couple of things. I still don't use it. Like I have, it's been in my backpack for like four weeks. Now. <laughs> That's kind of my, where mine stays too. <laughs> wow. Well, you, Adam, you said that you don't watch your swing. Do you ever look at your swing, Nelly? Like, do you guys watch your swings? Yeah, I'm super anal about it. Like super, <laughs> like, I have to record it like all the time because like yeah. recently in the past year and a half, like my swing, I don't know what I'm doing in it, but I'm like swinging the club around me weirdly, like instead of just going straight up. <laughs> so like my parents are so annoyed of me because I'm like, can you record this? Can you record this? Can you record this? They're like, really? Like I'm not coming out next time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've I've been there all the time and that's why I've told Eric I stopped watching because it just became too much. In another 20 years you'll you'll find out Nelly that it's too much. But keep just keep a nice balance at the moment just like you're doing. Well, my my phone consists of already probably 11,000 swing videos. <laughs> just videos. You have the high storage iPhone. I get it. It's good. Yeah, you got to go high storage. <laughs> got a lot of iCloud storage. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I saw the other day on um, Instagram. I think you posted that you had. Was it all threes on the front nine or something? Crazy. Yeah. That's wild. It was till seven. I, I till seven. I mean, yeah, I birdied, but it was a par five. It's impossible to get there in two for me, but. <laughs> Yeah. And I had a witness. My mom was out there. <laughs> so are you, do, when you, when you play like casually, we've had this chat with Adam, like, like what's the difference? Like, are you just you out there to go low or are you just out there to have fun? Like, <laughs> So I cannot play like a money match or a social like game. I cannot do yeah. it because like <laughs> I just get lost in like, being social and then I get really frustrated because I start playing poorly. So mm-hmm. when I'm out there, 
I like have to do my work. I always keep my stats when I'm like, it's like OCD now. I, <laughs> I keep my stats every single time I play, but I cannot do like social golf. Like I am so bad at social golf. So you're either you're on, you're just on, right? If you're on the course, you are on. Yeah, because I try to get in the mindset of, you know, I'm out playing a tournament. I'm trying to even put a lot of pressure on my putts. Like I'll even be like, okay, for the U.S. Open. <laughs> Wait, I, I do that too, and I've never been in the U.S. Open. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I just, just kind of get some pressure over putts and shots, and I, I try to be really serious. But I love flying. Like today, this morning, I went off before the men's group. I, I pl- I, sometimes I play at Sarah Bay. That's where. I played when I posted that score card. And today I hit two greens in nine holes. Okay. And so <laughs> like, I just post the good, but there's bad too. That's fair. That's fair. There's the Instagram <laughs> reality and then reality. Right. Exactly. right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I played, I played 18 in two hours and I love that because I feel like I get way more done like that. I want to circle back and talk about gear. Everyone loves gear. Um, one of the things that two people in this room have in common are uh, your wedges. Both you and Adam, uh, you guys play the SM8s, I believe. Um, and I was even nerding out about like just the the degrees that you guys play, and you know all the pros get super dialed in on like you know what degree best suits your game. Um, but outside of that, like you know, what do you look for in a wedge? Um, you know, what's that like number one thing that you want to like see and feel when you're hitting that ball around the green? So for me, I. Um, use my 58 degree. So I have a 58, 54 and 50. I've played that since I was like 12. Like I've not changed a lot of players, you know, put the 60 degree in, but um, what I look for is because, you know, I'm in Florida, it's very grainy. So being able to chip off of that and bunker shot, you know, some people I'm not, so I'm not very like in a sense, like a, a club nerd. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, it's good. It's good. I don't know what this is. I like it. I'm putting it in the bag. Like so simple. It feels good. If I can chip with it around the greens when it's grainy, um, and I can hit bunker shots with it properly without it kind of like sometimes they're they shoot a little too much. Or um, I tried this one out that has more bounce on it for the British, and I just didn't like it coming out of the bunker. So I just keep it really simple. Like a lot of players on the men's side, not as much on the women's change their wedges, depending on what event they play. I like to keep everything the same. This is the first time this year I put a wow. crack in for British. I usually, I always have a hybrid, actually a seven wood two that I added this year, which wasn't actually that bad at British. Um, but yeah, I keep everything the same. I am very like, I guess, uh, superstitious in a sense. <laughs> oh, we don't want to get into superstitious professionals. <laughs> it runs, it runs deep. It gets scary, that conversation. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of the same. I like keeping things the same as much as I can. How, um, and with the wedges too. However, I have changed around a couple times, uh, wedges. Well, just my 60 this year, I use a 60. And uh, I've changed the bounce a couple of times, like getting into the grainy stuff in Florida or uh, going to Memphis and then to Greensboro where it's very grainy. I went for more bounce and give myself a chance rather than sticking the leading edge in the ground and flumming chips. And um, <laughs> so I kind of have two. I really kind of only change with two, but I never used to. But uh, the, the, it's pretty extreme going from a Lynx Golf to to the grainy stuff in Florida. So, you know, I'm trying to give myself every little bit of help I can at this point. So my question is, do you change out your wedges a couple times a year or do you have the same wedge all for the whole season? Probably, I probably change, I probably change my 60 once or twice. It <laughs> depends how much practice I end up doing, <laughs> but the, re- the, and then I have 48, 52 and 56 and I think I use them all year I might start with a whole fresh new set at the start of the year but I, I I'm not wearing out the other wedges like a 60. I have to stay I like I usually use a wedge for the entire year I don't know why I'm like 
kids. Yeah. It's like a bad luck if I like with new grooves, especially like it spins way too much for me. I like when they're kind of used mm-hmm. up. You should. And yeah. the thing is, I always practice with events. So I do pitching wedge, eight iron, and my pitching wedge is so bad. Like I've used <laughs> it up way too much, but I will not. I'm committing to the end of the year. <laughs> well, there is a thing too, like, and it doesn't happen as much anymore with the wedges because we change them out so much, but you can use a wedge for a year. You like really develop a feel with that one club, whether the grooves are wearing or not. You like, you just know this club so good. And that is huge with any club in the bag. So I, I get it completely. I, uh, I, I know all about using clubs for a long time because my irons I use are actually made in 2001 <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're wearing out. And I've done the evens, I've done the odds, and they've all got wear marks on them, and and they're just about done. So I'm looking for a new set here pretty soon. I can't. I mean, the first time out with new wedges for me, I feel like one of you guys for maybe the first three holes. Right. And then the spin goes away for me. I don't know what it is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I got to leave mine out to rust them. Isn't that an old trick or something? Yeah. Yeah. Keep keep doing that. (laughs) So Adam, you were saying, uh, I think you told me, Nelly, you switched clubs this year, right? To new Titleist? Did that have anything to do with your success? So I was using the Tylus irons already last year and even the wedges, but I never got like properly fit for them. I actually went to TPI for the first time in my entire life this year in uh, end of January. And I was using the old Epic driver, like the five-year-old driver. I couldn't get fit for a driver at all. And then I went to TPI and they fit me in to a driver, which by the way, (laughs) is an amateur driver from what I've heard. It's like the, um, (laughs) and they were like, yeah, this is the first time a pro has ever won with this driver. (laughs) That's amazing. That's great. Right. That's great technology. We love to hear that. I'm like, this makes me feel really good about myself. (laughs) (laughs) Say more. Say more. But I just really like the look of it. I'm also very big on, I need to like the look of my clubs. If I don't, then I can't hit them. Yeah, I agree. I love, I'm I'm a TSI players now as well. And they're great for my slow speed. I converted him. (laughs) Yes, I was. I converted him. (laughs) <laughs> that's a big change that's it's nice to get a driver that you like that's for sure i uh i switched up in the middle of the year i was struggling all year and that's why i'd say i played average this year because i was driving it in the trees for the first six months and uh i changed shaft and i changed driver head i got fit and feel like i can play the game again so it is nice when you get that driver eric so Good luck, buddy. Sure, you didn't want to do the Henrik Stenson uh, Greenwood. It was getting it. It was getting there. I was I was getting pretty desperate by uh, by June. You know, I was pretty frustrated. <laughs> so anything would have worked at that point. But I did. I actually I put the two wood in at the U.S. Open as well as a driver, just in case the driver was not behaving. I I needed something going down the fairway. But um, and yeah, s- it's back still on a track. Big proponent of your seven wood. By the way, you're still a big proponent of the seven wood too, right? I need a seven wood. That I don't. Oh have. my god, I love it. I love it too. I need my heaven wood. <laughs> I I love it too. Uh, I have a hybrid, a seven wood, and a three wood. I'm sure you don't have <laughs> that setup. <laughs> I I haven't got the hybrid, but I've got the seven wood. I got the four wood and the driver. Uh, you know, it's just so they're so good to hit. I mean, it's actually versatile. Like you even said, you used it at the open this year, right? Yeah, you just like you just adjust the settings and it goes a little right. lower. The only thing I had I I draw it a little a little more than I do my other club, but mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to fix. Yeah. I actually use it as like my confidence builder on the range. I quickly hit through my irons and get to the seven wood and start <laughs> hitting nice woods off the deck and I feel good about myself. Yeah, it's so good. We're almost out of time, but a couple quick questions. Um, one of them about team play. So obviously, you know, the Ryder Cup just wrapped up. Um, you know, team play has been, you know, super popular within golf, just hearing a lot of passion, one from the fans, two from the players. Um, would love to hear, you know, do you think there should be more team play in golf? Um, maybe let's start there. 
Yeah, I mean, nothing will ever compare to Ryder Cup and Solheim Cup. I don't think, in a sense, anything will ever get that kind of hype. But I think it would be really great for the game, for women's golf, I think. You know, um, it would be, I've heard so many ideas from other people, fans, even pros saying that um, it would be really cool to do like a mixed team event. I think that would be super cool, interesting to do. Um, but, you know, the PJ Tour and the male players just have such a big fan base. And women's golf is already growing a lot. Um, girls golf is one of the fastest growing sports. Um, but I think it would just bring a lot more awareness and I don't know, attention to the game too. I'd like to see a pay-per-view match. You two, you guys pick some opponents. Who would you take on? I'm I'm tired of the quarterbacks and the golf. I want yeah. <laughs> let me get let me get Nelly Corda and Adam Scott versus anybody. We could do Jess and Rory. <laughs> Deal. D- done. I'm I'm watching. There you go. I'm I'm paying They're going I'm down. paying quadruple. They're going down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are we doing a best ball or? What? Yeah, what's the setup? What's the preferred setup there? What yeah. do you guys want to play? Yeah, it won't matter. It won't matter. <laughs> it we, we take them down anyway. Yeah. There are a couple of team events, right? Because the PJ Tour has one official one, isn't it? Zurich. Zurich. Zurich yeah. down in. Or, or, yeah. mm-hmm. Then they have one in Naples too, because I know Lexi plays it usually with Bubba. Oh, oh that's sh- at the uh, Shark yeah, Shootout. The Sharks course. Yeah. Is that a, a shark shootout event or no? It's sanctioned, but it's not. It's not in the cal. It's not like FedEx Cup points event. It's it is run by the tour, but yeah, they need to they need to get something happening. I mean, I I actually originally thought that it would have been cool to do it in the Olympics too, like as well as the individual to put the team in and the mixed team event, and uh, I thought that would have been really like a big thing for golf, like to raise the profile generally. Because there are a few team events, but they just kind of, they don't get the attention they deserve really. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there are, are, as you said, there are a couple of team events, but that's why I said like that, like Solheim for us and Ryder Cup, it just doesn't compare to any of the team events. So it would, I think to grow the game of golf and to bring an interest, it would have to be on a bigger stage. The stage would have to be bigger. And I, I think that would be a really cool opportunity for both sides, I think, mainly for us because we would benefit from it the most, I think, as women. Well, well, as like an Olympic gold medalist, you might have some uh, influence in pushing that along the with the IOC or something. You should think about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be cool. Maybe, maybe I'll reach out right away. <laughs> Yeah, let's make some calls. <laughs> Absolutely. It's got to happen. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Nelly, huge thanks for uh, spending some time with us. It was great to get to know you um, and uh, your game and, you know, just all the fun stuff you've been up to and uh, looking forward to uh, watching you more. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. And um, maybe we can do this again. Well, I can't wait to watch you you and uh, Adam take down your sister and Rory. So, <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm ready to watch that already. Uh, yeah. I- I got two weeks in uh, boot camp before before we do that too. Well, we're all going to boot camp. So. So. <laughs> Everyone's going. We're all going over to uh, Sarasota, Florida, at Concession Golf Club, and you know, boot camp ready. Signing up. I am there. Nelly, good luck with the rest of the season. Finish it off. I wish you all the best. Great plan. Thank you. Appreciate you too. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Fair Game Podcast with the champion golfer Adam Scott. Don't forget to hit subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or whatever service you may be using. We're also on Instagram and Twitter at Fair Game Golf, where you can follow us there too. We'll see you next time.